Good afternoon and happy Veterans Day. I want to thank every member of each service across these United States for their service to our country and their family members too. It's an important um, and meaningful way to serve our country and we're doing today by women veteran entrepreneurs in many places across the country in our SBA Small Business Administration Administrator Maria Contreras Sweet. Administrator Contreras Sweet from her very first day in the office back in April veterans became a high priority for her and she hosted a roundtable that very day. They joined her for her swearing in at the White House and she has been a, the strongest advocate that you can imagine for all things veteran including accelerated and improved programs for lending to veterans and uh, expanded training opportunities too which we're going to hear more about today and what that means to small business owners. So I would like to turn it over to Administrator Contreras Sweet. Welcome and thanks in advance. Barbara, what a fun thing to be doing today on Veterans Day is highlighting and celebrating the many contributions that women veterans make. And so I'm really proud to be here because I've had so many experiences of watching our great American people get in harm's way to protect us. For example, when I was in California as California Secretary of Transportation, I recall so vividly when we were uh, hit by 9-11 and we all knew that uh, all of those airplanes that were leaving New York were bound for California. So we didn't know what the next shoe was going to be when it dropped. We didn't anticipate what it would be. But what happened was that our state uh, law enforcement people went into the state buildings to protect, to make sure that no one was going to be victimized in our state buildings. And they got in harm's way and putting calling that order, asking our people to get in harm's way was a big responsibility and I'll never forget you know the strength and the commitment with which our people deployed. So I can well imagine what's taking place around the world seeing the same kind of leadership, the same kind of bravery and boldness that our military, our people in action are exercising every day to protect the freedoms that we enjoy and particularly women who give up so much as well to defend our country. So I'm particularly committed to making sure that we do everything that we can to make sure that when you come back home that we at the SBA do everything that we possibly can to help your transition be as easy as possible. So the SBA provides counseling, it provides access to capital and contracting opportunities so that you can be optimally successful. You're going to hear a little bit more about these from Barb and what I'm also pleased to say is that we have some success stories here that we want you to hear about. So I don't want to take too long except to say that this is going to be a brief introduction and we hope that as we go along the way that you'll remember to go to sba.gov to learn more about what we're doing and so that you and I can keep talking you can follow me through Twitter at MCS which are my initials Maria Contreras Sweet for biz B I Z. So it would be really terrific if you could join us and uh, keep the conversation going throughout the year. But we want you to learn more about our Boots to Business, about our Reboot program, about our Veterans Lender Advantage loan programs, and on and on. Barb, back to you. Thank you so much, Administrator. And I want to remind everyone who's joined us today that if you want to participate in the conversation, uh, please use hashtag Vets. Hangout, which is behind me as well. I'd like to introduce you now to three amazing women and business owners. They're going to share their stories and experiences and potentially some tips on what they wish they had done and what they are doing now that has brought them to where they are today. So Carmen Nazario is the president and CEO of Elion Tech, uh, excuse me, Elion International and an Army veteran. We have Trina Payton, the owner and president of ABN Technologies. And finally, Christine Zika, the president and personal concierge at CZ Concierge Services. Thank you each for joining us today. And I would, we will take some questions that we've already received on Google Plus, but I would like to start with one each for you. And I'll turn it over to Carmen. If you could tell us the things that you did when you were first starting out that really helped you get your business off the ground. 
Certainly. Uh, I, I first want to thank uh, the administrator, Contreras Suite, for hosting this event and the SBA. Um, I think this is an amazing event that really empowers our veteran-owned woman. And I also want to say thank you to my uh, veteran community on this Veterans Day for their service. Um, I feel like I've done a, a full circle just sitting here. I'm actually at the SBA uh, in downtown Portland, Oregon, because when I initially thought of starting a business, I did come to the SBA, and I signed up for SCORE counseling, and I signed up for SCORE classes. I remember taking this one a workshop where they went over every type of important area in business uh, that included finances, technology, marketing, accounting, and that really um, helped me start researching everything I had to do to launch my business. And the SCORE counselors also directed me to um, a good law firm as one of my initial areas was how do I structure my company and who do I go to. And so I'm really indebted to, to the SCORE and the SBA for that. I have personally taken advantage of everything the SBA has to offer. I uh, was certified as an 8A and went through that program as well and I've utilized um, the SBA for many different things, including all of their loan programs. I think one of the important things for me when I started my business was uh, trying to get as much information as possible and going to as many events and vendor shows, network events uh, that the government would put on as well as other organizations. Networking uh, was really important because there was always um, an educational component to any conference or event I attended and that really helped me understand the government landscape in terms of what opportunities were available to me. It also, there was always there very, uh, people that were able to address any questions I had. Um, I was very blessed to have wonderful SBA specialists that helped me through the way and um, at one point uh, when the SBA was offering the 8A Academy I was able to go to Howard University and really learn a lot about federal contracting. During that time, I was also able to share with uh, other uh, women businesses everything that I had learned. And um, um, I feel uh, one of the important aspects in starting a business is always to uh, define your structure and also set up your accounting systems and and meet with a CPA and I did all of that before I started my business and that was a, a, a tip that I would offer at this time. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, that was fantastic. So you can see that if you come to SBA and any of our partners, not just SCORE, but you can go to a Women's Business Center, you can go to a VBOC, a Veterans Business Outreach Center, our SBDCs, and all the different partners that make themselves available for complimentary counseling across the country. Barb, back to you. Thank you so much. And to find where you might find one of those resources that's close to you, and I know they are close by because we are everywhere, I'd recommend that you go to www.sba.gov and you'll see a local assistance tab on the top of that page and that will help you find exactly who's there for you. Trina, uh, you have experience in federal procurement which can seem like uh, the great unknown as we begin. So if you could talk a little bit about how you started in that process and where you've gone now because you have grown immensely and there are some tough choices to make along the way. So if you can briefly tell us about the beginning and those choices you've made, that'd be great. Yes, uh, thank you for inviting me to this event. I always want to participate whenever I can share my knowledge about uh, my experience and also I want to take a, a uh, say thank you for all the other veterans and their service uh, during this day. Um, I started in 2003. Very shortly after I started I met Carmen and Carmen and I have kind of been on this journey and, and part of my journey uh, was uh, starting with the SBA. 
I started uh, while I was still working for um, Washington Mutual, uh, which is now a different company. But uh, on my lunch breaks, I would go to the SBA and take uh, all of the score uh, sessions I could get in, all the training I could get in, and that really was a launching for me. Uh, and it, literally, it started right after I got the business license. I had I knew nothing about business, and the SBA was really crucial uh, at that point in uh, giving me information because I had a voracious appetite at that time. Um, so they had training classes, and uh, as I quickly grew, uh, the the company, uh, the needs of the company grew, and the SBA was there in terms of loans. I've taken advantage of that. And the training has really made the difference in our growth, and so I wanted to say that about uh, the SBA and the role that it's played in my success. Federal contracting is a bear. I'm not going to mince words about that. It is not to be taken lightly. You can easily get very um, overwhelmed by the paperwork and the, uh, the strategy and the marketing, and a lot of people uh, uh, look at it and they see the reward without uh, necessarily um, uh, understanding all the work that goes into the rewards. So I would say that if federal contracting is uh, genuinely a place where you have a market niche and you feel you could be successful in it, I take a, a, a extra second to do the homework that's required in understanding what it takes to win. Uh, our first uh, federal contracting award came through a partnership I was a new uh, business and I, I just happened to meet a guy at a networking event who had a customer who was a federal customer and they needed a small business to partner with and he and I talked and uh, we ended up winning a, a bid and that was my very first contract out of, of my business. So um, networking is definitely uh, the way to start in terms of an entry point uh, but there's also uh, other ways that you can look at uh, the Fed Biz Ops and other sites that offer opportunities and you can also uh, enter in in that way. So uh, there are multiple ways to, to, to enter. Thank you way. so much for that great story. So there you go. Now you've heard about our counseling. Now you've heard about our loans and our loans. Now is the time to look into it. We have set fees at zero for veterans and our women in particular, veteran women, we have set fees at zero for loans up to $350,000. And then there's a reduced rate for loans over $350,000. So this is the time. Some people have a rich uncle that can help them access capital. And some have a rich uncle that can introduce them to contracting opportunities at the federal government. But you have Uncle Sam. And that's what the SBA is for you. So I hope that you will study more and learn more about our counseling, about our contracting opportunities, and our access to capital programs that we have, particularly designed for veteran women. Barb, back to you. Thank you so much. And Trina, thank you for sharing those ideas and tips on how to get into federal contracting. And I want you to know that you're not alone. For those who, it's not just networking, right? SBA also has procurement center representatives and we have with DOD procurement technical assistance centers to help with each of those challenging steps and hopefully make it a bit smoother for those of you who choose to go to federal procurement. And perhaps you already know, but if you don't, you should, that federal spend 3% of it is going to go to service disabled veterans. And with SBA's uh, encouragement and support, federal agencies made that um, in fiscal 12 and 13. And we're very proud of our, our part in that and very honored to work with those service disabled vets who are in federal procurement. And, and women businesses also are, we're aiming for 5% of the federal government's procurement activity for women. So thank you for having two categories that we're covering today that are really important to your government and to our public. Thanks. I'm going to turn now to Christine and she's in Missouri with the CZ Concierge Service. Christine, I would love to hear about how your military service has affected you as a business owner and a few of the tips that you have about starting and growing a business. 
I've been asked this question a fair amount of times over the past five years that I've been in business. And I always go back to when you're in the military, in order for you to be able to accomplish a mission, you have to go back to your mission essential task list. And that was one of those things that my VBOC, the Veterans Business Resource Center, reminded me of as I was going forth into my business. So going back to the planning, preparing before you execute has been a key success factor for me um, and I think it's a key success factor for all the businesses that have made it through that um, that vetting process. I think that it's also important to remind ourselves about the adapting and overcoming because just when you think that you know exactly what it is that you're going to do in your business, that's the moment that everything changes. I can't tell you how many times that my target market it has changed just because I thought one way but then found that there was an opportunity someplace else. So learning to adapt and not being so structured in what you think you absolutely know and again, again going back to you know the scores in the V-Box, having them to sit there and say to you when maybe we need to adjust fire, right? I mean, that's what we have to learn how to do. We have to learn to do adjust fire. And then the other part of it is hurry up and wait. And we all know we've been there, right? We've been told that by our, our commanders that we need to hurry, 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 and then all of a sudden we're sitting on a tarmac for a long period of time. And what happens is is that we want everything right here and now, right? This is what we want. We want, we, we want success right now, and we forget that there is steps that go into that mission preparedness. We forget that there is a moment where we have to set back and that is where you have your your SBA counselors and all of them sitting there going all right okay you're there you're there now now let's go forward and and I think that those are the parts about the military that as much as they were frustrating at the time that we were going through them they have become so essential to what it is that we're doing now as business owners that's exactly right. To know that one in ten employers in the small business community is now a veteran, the patents that you're filing, the people that you're hiring is quite remarkable. But you're right. It's all those leadership skills that you were trained uh, to exercise that you're now exercising in entrepreneurship that's making women such a success. So Barb, keep it going. Happy to keep it going. Thank you so much. Uh, Christine, I love that. You covered what are, I think, standard skill sets across the military, and that's agility, endurance, and patience. I think once in a while outside our community, there's a, an assumption that we follow orders really well. Well, well, we can take an order, but if, when it, it turns to chaos, something has to be done, and we can make um, some sense out of that chaos and continue to move forward and achieve the mission, and that's a fantastic quality to start as a baseline for entrepreneurs. So Carmen, I would like to talk to you about lending and at those times when you needed capital to infuse your business, where was the SBA for you? Um, the, the first uh, time I borrowed was probably five years into my business and I was able to obtain a, um, a small SBA loan and uh, which I later paid off so there's been several instances where I've used the SBA and I'm currently actually have a Patriot loan which I utilize for capital expansion um, but um, I've used for many many years SBA Express uh, credit lines as well through our local banks and so I've really relied on that um, the SBA's loan program to grow my business. That's a that's what's so fun about uh, all of these opportunities that we're presenting. You can go the con the uh, full spectrum. You can start with first counseling, and then when you need your first loan, a micro loan is available. We're now expanding them and and making them more available through credit unions. And then after that, you say, now I really want to build my business, and I have a technology I want to invent. You can go to our SBIR program, and that's actually a grant. It acts like angel financing, where we give this grant so you can develop the technology that you were seeking, and then, uh, but we don't take an equity position, so it's the best kind of angel financing. And then once you're successful in building out your business plan, 
then you're really ready for the bigger loan. You can go get one of our veterans uh, loan that we just described here, up to $350,000 as we said, zero fees. And then when you're ready to contract to deploy that money, you can go to our get certified to make sure that you're veteran certified, women certified, so you can get considered favorably in this instance. Again, Uncle Sam helping you. And then after that, we've had many entrepreneurs, veteran entrepreneurs, who have said, now I want to build and uh, get make sure that I get the contract, and they get an award, and then we help them go into international markets. Right now, we're going to be seeing, in the next 10 years, a billion new consumers joining the middle class, waiting to do business with people in the U.S. And so we're putting in technology to connect people here with opportunities abroad. And then finally, we have an export working capital line that's available when you get international work. So we're providing solutions for the full continuum of access to capital, counseling, and contracting. Thank you so much. And Carmen, I appreciate you sharing your experience. We did just get a question from Victoria on Google Plus about will the SBA bring back Patriot Express? So because you did mention that, Carmen, that is a program that sunset in December of last year, and it has been replaced by this robust program that we have now, the Veterans Advantage, which uh, Administrator Contreras Sweet just um, shared with you. It's a significant savings to veteran borrow borrowers, and that is the way that we are headed for the foreseeable future, and I'm very grateful for that. It's made a big difference in people's ability to start and grow their businesses. It's a wonderful program. I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. Trina, I'd like to go back to the very beginning. There's a question that was shared a few days ago from LaTanya, um, and she said, I need assistance starting my business. I have an idea in my head, but I don't know how to write a successful business plan to secure a startup. Is there anyone who will do this for free? I think all three of you could answer this, but I'm going to let you, you start us off, Trina. Thanks. Um, sure. There's all kinds of support and assistance that you can get for free from the SBA. Some of the SCORE counselors are very, very well-seasoned business people that will sit down and answer your every question if the business plan question is right for you, uh, whether your idea of the research that you need to do. A lot of uh, in the support that they give are uh, helping you ask the right questions when you're getting started. But I would say that the important thing is to just get started. Even if the first draft is not the greatest one, just put down your ideas on a piece of paper, organize it later. Thank you, Trina. Christine, can you talk about, you mentioned earlier, the change in who your market is. So mm -hmm. how did you pivot so well, and do you have any tips on finding your market and then actually marketing to them? Well, as I was taught by my local VBOC, and I can't say enough about my Veterans Business Resource Center. I love them, and I love the fact that they've partnered with the SBA. Um, I can go on and on and on about the wonderful counseling and the support and everything else. And that's really where this comes in, right? So during my process of what was my business going to do, what was my business going to look like, and going through that business plan process, I had gone through their bootstrap program, which actually allowed me to talk to a group of people about okay, well, I think this is who I want, maybe not. So I'll give you an example. Um, most people, when they hear concierge services, the first thing they say is, rich people, oh my gosh, you have to go after rich people. Well, I, after doing research and showing, um, they had they had shown me where to do research, so my local libraries and the different types of databases and where people were spending their money and what did it look like. Once you can put all of those statistics into a nice little round ball, guess what I found out? It isn't the rich people I'm looking forward to the businesses. So I adjust fire again, going back to trying to figure out who it is that I'm going to work best with. And then over the course of the past five years, that's been narrowed down and narrowed down thanks to my uh, counselors. Thank you, Christine. I think there are a number of people in this conversation that are with us and aren't able to participate and ask all that I would, so I want to share with them a couple things that they should know about. And if you haven't taken part in these either, Christine, Trina, 
and Carmen, let me know because we'll, I think you'd be a great fit here. Veteran Women Igniting the Spirit of Entrepreneurship is a program specifically for women veterans. It's an intense uh, and just emotional because many women veterans, for whatever reason, don't identify as a veteran once they leave the uniform. And it's a chance to bring back that pride in service and find a safe place and a really motivating place to explore entrepreneurship. It's also open to women spouses of service members. So, and I wanted to hit on that point as well. The, the programs that we have talked about in lending and in this training opportunity are open to family members. They serve as well, and SBA recognizes that. So, is there anyone who's joined us today who has VWISE experience? Trina, did you? Yes. Can yes, you tell us about it? I've had three uh, VWISE experiences, one as an attendee, one as a panel member uh, for a small business, and I just recently came back from the alumni event in uh, at San Antonio, and it is an incredible, uh, energizing experience to be in the same room and have a commonality that bridges all the the you know, the gaps that divide us. All industries are there, all business ideas. It is a wonderful, creative spirit. So uh, it was, I, was a, I was honored to be a part of that. And I'd love to give a shout out to the Institute for Veterans and Military Families, who's done an amazing job with blending a public and private partnership to keep that program strong. And I know that the next session has already been filled, but please keep your eyes open. And New Orleans is January and we should soon have the rest of the rollout for 2015 so keep an eye out. Boots to Business is something that SBA offers for transitioning veterans and their spouses and um, as Administrator Contreras Sweet mentioned earlier we also have a program called Reboot because we realize that this curriculum is fantastic for transitioning vets but vets from every era could really use some targeted um, development just for them and so I hope that you will also look for that in your local community a great place to start is sba.gov slash veterans where you can find updates on where that is near you and that will be a two-day program um, with the resource partners that you've heard about today participating we are almost out of time so I'm going to turn it over to our panelists for any last comments you care to share Christine please kick us off Please, veterans, please, don't think that you have to stand on the island of me if you want to start a business. Reach out to these very intelligent and very helpful organizations that are SBA partners. Most successful businesses are going to reach out to somebody at some point. Let this be the first place that you reach out to, whether it is SCORE, whether it's your local VBOC. Um, mentorship and counseling and all of that is right there waiting for you. Do not let it slip through your fingers. It's a superb call to action. Thank you, Christine. Brina, what would you like to share? I'd just like to share that uh, I, the questions that I get from uh, other small businesses that are in various, st various stages of startup, a lot of them really have a lot of trepidation. And I would say to all of the courage that uh, you exhibited in your service to your country, use some of that for yourself and just uh, start. Don't worry about the everything being perfect and don't worry about the mistakes you're going to make. You're going to make mistakes. But there is help out there, and I mirror everything that Christine said about the SBA. Thank you so much, Trina. Carmen. Um, yes, I just wanted to also offer one last tip. Um, if you're starting a business, sometimes it's hard to get your first customer. Um, but what a person can do is try to subcontract to a big prime company, and that will give you some past performance that you can later use to go prime some contracts. So networking is the key to building relationships that later perhaps you could work with other large businesses that will help you get started and grow. Thank you so much to everybody. Barbara, I want to thank you. I want to thank Carmen, uh, Christina, 
and Trina, all of you, thank you so much for joining us on this very special day where we honor you and all of your contributions. Barb served as well, and so we're committed to her leadership. I'm delighted that she is now running our Office of Veterans Affairs here at the SBA. And I encourage every one of you who have thought about starting a business to go to sba.gov to learn about how we can help you. I marvel, and I've started three businesses, and I wish I had known more about the SBA when I was starting mine. I can tell you that there are going to be people waiting with open arms, complimentary services. This is your government trying to serve you because you've served us so well. And so we want to help you start and grow your business. Go to SBA.gov. Thank you, Administrator Contreras Sweet and our wonderful business owners, Christine, Carmen, Trina. We look forward to continuing this conversation, so please. Um, this one last plug, MyVetBiz, the hashtag MyVetBiz. This is a chance for you to tell us about your own veteran business or to elevate someone that you know who does own a vet business. So look at the conversation there and please know that SBA is your partner and we look forward to working with you. Have a good Veterans Day. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.